Hi dearest lovely, my name is Kaylin Vu and it's such a pleasure to meet you. I'm the founder of Dear Lovely Universe. My mission is to help people live their best lives possible by transforming them into the best versions of themselves. Hi dearest lovely, so today I'm here with Kelly Kristen and we're, she's an amazing, powerful, incredible woman that talks all about empowerment, spirituality, and she is just incredible. I know that she inspires so many women to unleash themselves on her podcast. And so we're here today to talk about all of those amazing things. So welcome to the podcast, Kelly. Hi, everybody. Hi, Kaylin. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. Thanks. I'm really excited to have you here today and be sharing this, you know, the mo I think self-love and empowerment are some of the most important things when it comes to having a life of personal value. So I'm really excited to be able to have this conversation with you today. Yeah, I could not agree more. To me, it's like self-love is the underlying thing for how you have a really great life. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. So I just want to first off start with what kind of inspired you to start this journey of empowering women and follow this route? Yeah. So it, it's funny. I love this question. I always feel like it is such a loaded question because I really, I never intended to be doing what I'm doing today. Um, I never sought out to be a woman's coach or empowering women. I you know, really, I went to school, I was a nurse, um, I had sort of a really just kind of ordinary sort of life, but I, I always had this feeling like, there's got to be something more, there's got to be something more to do, there's something more, like, this is boring, I don't want to work in a hospital all day, I don't want to do these things that I thought I had to do, um, and then for me, I was actually in a really highly abusive relationship for many, many years, and I reached my breaking point in that relationship, and upon leaving that, I had just so many cascading events happen in my life where I first was just overcome with so much freedom and I'm like, I'm not going to do anything I don't want to do ever again in my life. Um, and then I started to have a lot of health issues and different things happen that were sort of unexplainable. I went from a really healthy uh, woman in my you know mid twenties to somebody with two autoimmune conditions, like gained weight rapidly, like my hair was falling out. It was crazy. I just, I had really like no idea what was going on. Yeah. And so at this time I had already left nursing because I just was not on board with Western medicine and taking pills to try to, you know, just put a band-aid on what was actually happening. And I went to a doc, you know, so many doctors at this point, um, and they're telling me I have to be on all these different medications forever. And I have all of these issues and how blah, 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 how it's never going to heal. And I'm never going to be better and all this stuff. And I basically just said, you know what? I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to figure it out. So I actually, from that point, went to a holistic health institute, which is the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I got really into holistic health. Um, and that's when I kind of like discovered the coaching world was through that avenue of health coaching and things. And I really started out there. But for me, I, I figured out that even though I was now eating the right foods and I was healing my gut and doing things to help my body, I was still really ignoring the trauma of what I had been through in my life and all of the emotions and all of the things that I just wanted to say, oh, I'm fine. It's okay. And I can move on. I'm out of that situation. It's good. And I think you know, so many of us do that in life where we go through something highly traumatic. And then once we're out of it, we're like, whew, glad that's gone now. And just kind of don't want to touch it again because we're afraid. We're afraid of really digging into that. And for me, I guess I just started using my life as, as this way. It's like, I want to live the best life ever. And I'm not living the best life ever if I'm still caught up in my past and caught up what I've been through. So from, you know, holistic health, I really got more interested into um, 
neuropsychology. I got really, really interested in the subconscious mind. So I became an NLP practitioner. I'm now a clinical hypnotherapist and I practice another thing called Psych K that is all to do with working in the subconscious to rewire beliefs, um, to find out what's actually going on. You know, I believe our subconscious mind is a reflection, you know, our body is a reflection of what we believe and our pain that we experience, the, um, the disorders that we have, the dis-ease that we have in our body largely comes from our mind. I mean, it's one thing to have an inner injury, you fall down and break your arm, but it's another thing to just, you know, have these chronic issues that are plaguing our society. And while some people will dig through that with food and gut health and this and that, I just decided to dig through it uh, through emotional, spiritual things like that. And, you know, just going down that road further and further and further, I have now really honed in on what I do with helping women to overcome toxic relationships so they can heal, really deal with all the, all that trauma that they've been through and so that it never happens again. Because that was my sort of turning point in my life after getting out of that situation. For me, it was really about, okay, this happened. How am I never in my life going to let somebody take my power away from me again? How am I going to be the woman that I know that I am? Because I had always felt that I was a really powerful, strong, capable woman. And I was in this situation for so long where that was not reflecting. So mm-hmm. that that really is what led me down on this path. And here I am today. <laughs> yeah, that's so incredible how you you went through all of that and then you tried to get some help and the doctors just wanted you to do all of that stuff. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a shame to me. Like, like I said, I have... Uh, a high amount of education, obviously, being a nurse. I was a, a psychiatric nurse. So I have a high amount of education on the medications and the different mm-hmm. things. And to me, it just really started not making any sense. It just didn't make sense to me that somebody could go from, like I said, a perfectly healthy person to having all of these issues and for some medication made in the lab to be an answer. So- I just, I could not sit with that. You well, know, I'm so glad you said that you're going to find another way. So glad that you did that. And then I'm so glad that led into figuring out more about the mind. And I love how you integrated that the mind has such a huge effect on the body. Huge. It does. Huge. Yeah. And I think that that's still so often missed for people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even people that like some of my clients that will have gosh, like I've, I've helped clients cure chronic yeast infections through subconscious mind work because the, their body is literally telling them like, hey, I don't want to be with this person that you are with, right? And we have all of these, our, our body gives us clues and signals, like for people that are out there having anxiety or panic attacks, like those are clues and signals from your subconscious that something is really wrong here and you are not listening. And the thing is, is like our bodies will give us these little signs and we'll ignore them because it's, it's normal. Oh, these things happen. It's whatever. We'll ignore them. We're ignoring them, but it's really our intuition trying to, you know, it, it's, it's saying, Hey, like there's something wrong here. Pay attention to me, pay attention to me. And then eventually if you don't pay attention to it, your body is going to make you pay attention to it. And exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's such an incredible story of experience of, of, going through all of that and then helping empower women now, does it, is it really rewarding for you? Oh my God, it's the best. It's the absolute best thing. It's the best feeling in the world for me to women to truly know their worth. And we hear that a lot, right? Know your worth, know your worth. <laughs> but I'm talking about be so good with who you are and know like inside every single one of your cells down through all of your bones that you are worthy, that you deserve the best in life and that you don't ever have to settle for anything that is not making you happy for any love that doesn't feel like the exact love that you want. And when women get to that point, we're unstoppable. And, you know, like so many women think, oh, you know, maybe that's not possible for me or it's like, there's a saying, and actually my boyfriend says this all the time, is we accept the love that we believe that we deserve. 
And when you can get to that point within yourself that you think that you know, like, I deserve better and I will never accept anything less than that. I just won't. It doesn't matter. I'll be alone because I love who I am. I'm working on me because that's the most important thing. When you get to that place in your life, it's, it's magic. I totally agree. I mean, it's, it's so crucial. I remember a point in my life when I didn't value myself. I was constantly drowning myself with you know, medication or drugs or alcohol mm -hmm. to distract myself from the truth. But eventually I, I realized that I was on a point of literal death, you know, yeah, from all of the things I was doing to myself. And I think actually hurting yourself is like the most hurtful thing to do to yourself. Like, totally. So I, I like, there was a, there was a period of time when for about eight months, I would like go to the beach every day and read and just contemplate and start exercising and eating better, you know, quit any, quit any kind of substance. And I've started to realize like life is so, it's what you make of it. Like it doesn't matter what happened to you. It's what you do now. And totally. I started to realize that I, I didn't necessarily deserve what happened to me, you know, but I couldn't keep hurting myself. So, and so now I decide I made a choice to live a happy life or a life not in pain anymore. And I think that was when it all changed for me. Yeah. And I love what you just said. Like, yeah, you did not deserve what happened to you. It's not about deserving or not deserving because I don't think any of us deserve to go through really painful things and struggle. But how I look at it now is this is here for me to use it. You know, like I could look back at this time in my life and say, that was the worst time ever. I can't believe these things happened to me. There's something wrong with me. I'm broken. Or I can say, wow. I needed that experience to catapult me into the woman that I am today because this power was always inside of me, but I needed this experience to be that catalyst to say like, okay, Kelly, now step into it. Like this, what do you need to learn from this to be that powerful person? And I know that there's a lot of people. And when we get into things like we're talking about trauma and, you know, highly traumatic things that people have been through, a lot of people don't like that I say that because it requires responsibility and it requires for you to stop playing the victim in your life. And when you can take responsibility that for your part in whatever it was. And when you can take responsibility and say like, hey, that was just an experience in my life. I can accept it because once you accept things, like that is such magic sauce right there is just mm -hmm. learning how to accept things, accept this is something that happened. I don't have to necessarily forgive anybody for anything. I just have to accept that this is what happened. Now the choice is what am I going to do with it? Yeah. And, you know, you've made a really powerful choice in your life. So, you know, congratulations on that. Thank you so much. You know, it really is life changing. I think, well, I totally agree that accepting something is the first step, I think, towards creating a life for yourself beyond that experience. Yes. Because, and, and with, I, the thing about, I think, accepting something doesn't mean necessarily you have to be buddy-buddy with that person or anything no, like that. No, no, no. It's just coming to terms with yourself that, that this was something that happened and you can move forward. And yes. I think that is just such a powerful thing. Um, I, I think that when it comes to accepting, it, it, it's... It's in so many realms, like <clears throat> accepting childhood traumas, relationships, things from work, or even everyday things that build up. Totally, totally. Like, you know, Eckhart Tolle has this great quote. And I remember when I actually was really first starting my healing process and really trying to come to terms with everything that I was going through. I read the book, The Power of Now. Actually, I didn't read it. I was listening on Audible. I love Audible books. But, um, <laughs> and I remember he said, accept 
the situation or leave it. All else is madness. And it like stopped me in my tracks in that moment because I had realized how much complaining I was doing in my life, how, you know, how many times I was going to complain about something. And I'm, and I literally in that moment realized I was mad. I was mad because there's only two options. I can accept it or I can leave it. Right. So, Mm -hmm. and you have to make that choice because otherwise you're just perpetuating misery and you are the one who is creating it. And that, you know, just that moment for me was so huge. And that's something that I come back to all of the time now, whenever I catch myself complaining about this or, you know, feeling this a type of way about something, I'm like, okay, Kelly, accept it or change it. That's it. And if I can't change it, I have to accept it. And I have to know the difference between those things. Right. But acceptance is, like I said, that magic sauce that just kind of gets everything going. Mm -hmm. I love how you said that if you're complaining and stuff like that, people may not want to realize it, but they're actually kind of allowing it to happen. Yes. Yeah. So what do you recommend people, like steps that they could take if they're in that position? In the position of complaining or? Like complaining about things, not trying to take ownership. They don't want to believe it's true. Yeah. So for me, I would say like the first step is really taking an honest look at your life. An honest look, where am I happy? You know, where am I satisfied with my life? Do I, you know, does my my life actually reflect the desires that I have? You know, I'm really, really big on getting clarity around what it is that you want. Because whenever you're in place and saying, I don't like this, or I don't want this, or you're complaining about all of these things, okay, that's where your energy is. That's where your focus is. That's where your attention is. That's where you're sending all of your energy. That's option one, and you can stay there, but I'm pretty sure your life's not going to be that great. Option two is saying, okay, if I have all these things that I don't want, I don't like, well, what is it that I do want? And putting your energy and your focus there and just making a simple shift like that, taking your attention off of what you don't want and putting your attention on what you do want can radically change your life. A hundred percent. Yeah. What you focus on grows. And what you put your energy in determines so much, so So much, much. so much. It's crazy Mm -hmm. how much, like, I I like to do this thing with my clients where I'm like, okay, think of yourself like this energetic being and you have plugs all over you and you can plug in to wherever, wherever you're putting your plug in is where your energy is. And so you think about it, let's say you have a hundred plugs because we're like a hundred percent, right? And you have 98% of your plugs plugged into shit that you don't want, things that you don't like, things that you complain about, beliefs about you that are negative, you know, all of these things that you're just plugged into. Or you could have your plugs plugged into the positive things. You could have your plugs plugged into what you're trying to create. You can have your plugs uh, plugged into beliefs that are serving to you and expansive and can really illuminate your life. But, and when you get that visual and if you could, you know, for your audience, if you're listening, really start to get that visual of yourself with these plugs, you start to realize where your energy is going and you unplug it. You can literally do this in meditation, unplug from that belief, take that plug out and put it into something else. Because when you can visualize something like that, so it's like the conscious mind and the unconscious coming together to create this visualization of this, it's really, really powerful because it's like, no, I'm choosing to take my energy out of this thing and put it somewhere else. Definitely, definitely. I definitely recommend people to try that and, and meditate both, both, um, (laughs) totally. What you were saying about putting your energy into places, what, what do you think are good examples of putting your energy into the right place? Yeah. So for me, it's like, I, I, I'm really, really big on first establishing what it is that I want. Like we have to know where we're going to be able to get there, right? This is living intentionally. This is becoming a conscious co-creator of your life. When I decide 
what it is that I desire. I decide what I want my life to look like every day from the moment that I wake up to the moment that I go to sleep. What is it that I want to be doing? Where do I want to be? How do I want to feel? All of these things that I decide because we are co-creators in this thing called life, right? And once you understand that and you can pull your intentions, that's such a shift. So to me, once I decide that, then I start looking at, okay, if I'm living my life that way, what is it that I believe? You know, what are my beliefs as that version of me? What is it, uh, who am I being as that version of me that's living that life that I want to live? And I plug in my energy there. I plug in my energy to those beliefs. I plug in my energy to believing that life is always working in my favor, that anything I want to do is possible, that all of these things that, you know, I desire to have, whether that be materialism or not, all of that is possible for me. I plug my energy in there. Yeah. I love that so much. And to believing into yourself and to believing anything is possible and to the positive side of things. I often to, like to tell myself that I'm beautiful. I like to often tell other people they're beautiful. I love to give compliments. Yeah. And just focus on the positive side of things. Yeah. And not because the other ones don't exist, but because that, I think, is just a more fulfilling way to live. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like, okay, could it be possible that, you know, bad things just happen and, you know, we're all doomed? I mean, I guess, but why? <laughs> why would I choose to believe that? I have a choice in what I can believe about life. So if it is also possible that life really is supporting me, that the universe has my back, that all of these things are working out in my favor, that no matter what, like I am going to be successful, that's possible too. So why wouldn't I just put all of my energy there? I love that. I love that. So as you were talking, it made me think of this factor. I feel like some people feel that it's not okay for them to be okay. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? So to me, that's a learned behavior. So like I talked about in the beginning, I'm super involved in the subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind houses our identity, our values, and most of our beliefs. When I say subconscious, we are not consciously aware of it right? We don't really know what's happening there. How you know what's happening in your subconscious is take a look at what's actually happening in your life. That's a reflection of what's happening, what your beliefs are in your subconscious. But if you are somebody who, you know, is constantly having issues or constantly having things happen, or you, you just can't feel good, you, you know, or it, you have this idea of like, oh, well, the shoe's always going to have to drop or something like that. It's because that's a learned behavior, something that things that have happened in your experience growing up where maybe that did happen at, when you were five years old, like you felt really, really good. And then something horrible happened to you, or maybe it wasn't even that horrible, but your five-year-old mind took it as being absolutely terrible, right? These things, when we don't know that they're there, they control our entire life. That is why I love doing subconscious work because when you have these issues into adulthood, we don't have to guess what happened. I can go into your subconscious mm -hmm. and we can actually get to the root of the issue, release it, and then have you form a new belief, rewire it in your mind and literally get rid of that idea because the answer is really conditioning. That is why if you are so used to, right? Like you think about humans, we, uh, we have homeostasis in our bodies, right? Which means that our bodies want to be at a certain temperature. They want to have a certain amount of all of the, you know, sodium and potassium in our body. It's homeostasis. We do not like to get off of that, not even a little bit. The same is in what you are used to, right? We don't like to get away from that. It's uncomfortable. And that's why for a lot of people that have maybe had a lot of issues starting when they were younger, that's who they turn into when they're older because mm -hmm. it's comfortable. Even though it's uncomfortable, even though they would say, you know, consciously, I don't want this. This is not what I really want. It's just that that's what the subconscious believes and that's tied into identity. Yeah, totally, totally. I, 
I think that some people can get stuck <clears throat> into believing that they are some kind of identity or belong to some kind of group. But if the skin sheds, if you didn't have a gender, if you were from like, I don't know, any part of the world, like just strip all of those, who are you? You know? Yeah. So I think people, people get caught up in these identities and some of them can don't realize that they this is something that they've created in a sense and it can be stripped at the same time it's, i i think identity is something that people can can recreate for themselves if they want to if they want to not be necessarily emo anymore <laughs> and they can let go of that and it's okay i i i agree that all of this stuff could stem from being when you were younger and i think a lot of it does and it's just so unfortunate that so many of these problems for challenges i'd like say challenges because they're things that people overcome totally can overcome they that they that they linger but it's just so possible to to move forward it's so possible and like you said like sometimes people on the surface they say that they don't like it but it, they're feeding it at the same time right and it's really, I, I think for me, mostly, I've just come to this understanding, it's a lack of education. Most mm -hmm. people have no idea about their subconscious at all and about what that even really means. And, you know, even the idea that I personally believe we all have trauma. We all have trauma. When I say that word trauma, what instantly comes up for people is abuse, like really terrible, terrible things happening. Like, okay, that is one form of trauma. We'll call that big T trauma, but there's little T trauma. Things that happen when you're five years old that you don't know that you um, were at school. Let's say you're in kindergarten and your mom was 10 minutes late to pick you up and you're the only child left. And you know, people are freaking out. Oh, where's your mom? Where's your mom? And you feel like, oh my God, my mom left me. And in that moment, you're a five-year-old and you're freaking out. And then your mom shows up 10 minutes later, but you did not know how to process that when you were five. So you came out to this belief that you were being abandoned or that you can't trust your mother, right? So there's these things that happen that looking back, like when I work with people and we do these exercises where we're clearing out root causes, they'll come out of a hypnosis or something and be like, I didn't even remember that happened. And it feels almost silly that I've been carrying that my whole life, right? Because it's like, now that would happen and you'd just be like, oh, whatever, I'm just going to play on my phone, hang out and wait for a minute, like no big deal. But when you're five years old, it is a big deal. And in that moment, any time that you are feeling unsafe, physically unsafe, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, that's creating trauma. So we have to do the work to release this. And that's, that's really like for me on my journey, that's where I, I felt like, you know, personal development, all the things that I was doing were failing me in a way because for a long time, and I know you and I were talking about being on the positive tip and I'm so about being on the positive tip, right? Plugging in that energy, mm -hmm. but it's not enough just to do that. If you are not doing the work to release what needs to be released, like you can believe happy things all you want and talk happy thoughts all you want, but your subconscious is still housing the other things. So we have to do the release work. Yeah. So what are a few examples of release work? How could someone either get help or help themselves? Yeah. So for me, I... I do, like I said, a mixture of NLP timeline therapy. I do hypnosis and um, psych K, which are all things that can get in there and rework in the subconscious. If you're not able to work with somebody, um, it the, the type of hypnosis I do is a little bit different than the hypnosis that you're going to get on um, YouTube or something, right? Because there's like a hypnosis to fall asleep or that's good. And I I will put those hypnoses out as well, but they're different than release work. They're different than transformational hypnosis, right? That really has to be done in some kind of container, whether it's a group course or 
uh, you know, I make DIY courses for people that include that work or one-on-one -on -one that can include that work because it's much more specific to different issues that you're going through. But if you're somebody who's like, I can't, you know, maybe I can't afford to work with anybody or I'm just kind of getting started, the idea is to really get into your body because like I said, our body is a reflection of our subconscious. And oftentimes we try to avoid what we're feeling in our body through everything else that's going on in our life. But if you can stop and pause and feel into yourself, like if you are having an experience with somebody and it's making you feel uncomfortable, stop, pause, scan your body. Where do you feel it? You know, start really getting curious, get in there, feel that emotion. What is this actually asking of me? Am I feeling rejected right now? Am I feeling abandoned? Okay. Can I let this go? Where is that coming from? You can start to do this work on your own, you know, and I think it's really important to note like what you were talking about earlier, where you were saying, um, the substance abuse and the drinking and the, all of these other things, those are the things that we do to not feel what is actually going on inside of us, right? And oh my gosh, that was me for, for quite a while, right? Like I wanted to go out. I just wanted to drink and have a good time. And, you know, and, and that's in our culture. Like it's really drinking and, and binge drinking. All that stuff is glamorized to a certain extent and seen as normal in a lot of places. And if you're in that group, it can be seen as normal. But in my experience with not only myself, but clients and everybody I talk to, there is something being hidden underneath that. We're not wanting to feel, you know, and it's not just substances, it's eating. You know, if you're overeating, if you are overworking, you're a workaholic, you know, or you like always have to have a new project or always do something, you have to be busy all of the time. Those are ways that you are avoiding the feelings in your body. So yeah. you have to, you know, be really present with yourself. And mm -hmm. I, again, I'm going to come back to the idea of meditation. Even if you started just with a simple meditation you know, in the morning, it could be five minutes, it could be 10 minutes, it could be three minutes, just as long as you do something where you quiet your mind, scan your body, feel what you're feeling, and just allow yourself to be and to breathe. And that's immensely powerful. Definitely. But you were talking about being in the moment. I think that's so important. And I love how that, that does tie in definitely to meditation. Being in the moment allows you to to, I, so I, I, there's this quote by Ken Honda. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it says something like, if you're not living in the moment, then you're not living at all. And I think it takes living in the moment sometimes to actually know what would be the most productive way to work, to plan ahead, to, you know, get in touch with yourself in your body. Like we've, like we you touched on being in the moment can sometimes be a little typical with some of the, I mean, the, our modern lives are so fast paced. So to sit down and be in the moment actually takes some effort, but it's, it's so important, so important. And I think one of the things that I do to act, to get into the moment is I'll say, I'll think of what I'm grateful for. I'll think of, like, I'll thank my body for working so hard, for keep, keeping me happy and healthy. I'll thank the universe for allowing my physical existence. And, you know, just yeah. I'll start saying a gratitude prayer. And I think that's a great way to acknowledge the present moment and where you are. Yeah, that's beautiful. I actually do something really similar where I do just like a 10 second blessing where I just pause and I'm like, oh, bless this moment, bless my body, bless this space. Like I'm so grateful. And I just, you know, bring the acknowledgement to that, you know, just the moment that I'm sitting in, that I'm standing in, whatever. And it is, it's such a powerful practice because, it, you know, I think it just, when we're, we can just, for me, I can be happier, you know, like I can, I can experience so much more joy and so much more happiness when I allow myself to actually experience all of the amazing things around me all of the time instead of, you know, constantly trying to think about what's going to happen in the future or be, you know, like I said, plugged into those past things that happened and having that just that gratitude moment that, oh my God, I'm so lucky to be alive moment is so huge because it really just shifts your whole perception. Totally. 
totally. So as you were saying that, it had, I mean, think about this concept. So I often try to live through my heart. And <clears throat> like, I do use my mind. I do a pretty good mix. But I try to live through feeling more so than every single logistical thing you know I just feel like if it feels right it makes sense yeah so what, is, what is your take on that uh, I absolutely love that and to me you know that was a process for me to get to that place because I think you know the truth is is that we live in a patriarchal structured society and it is when I say that I'm not like oh men are bad and evil that is not my thing <laughs> at all. It's just the idea that we live in a logically structured society that, oh, it's normal for you to get up at this time, go to bed at this time, and everything's sort of structured out and all of that. And there's a lot of emphasis on the masculine energy, which is that achievement, that constant thing of having to do, yeah. do, do all of the time. It is that, um, you know, idea of everything is logical and all of this stuff. The feminine is that slow, is that feeling, is that really heightened intuition. And we all have that, whether you're a man or a woman. But, you know, as females, we really do have a special intuition that you can only experience if you get out of your head and into your body, if you get into that space where you're listening to that little voice inside of you that's coming from within you, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's super, super powerful. And again, your intuition will increase once you're doing that work to feel what's in your body and to get in your body and get out of your head. And, yes. and all of those things that I was talking about before, the ways that we, you know, escape our bodies, all learned behavior from the society that we're living in. I actually go super in depth in this in this process and everything in my book, um, The Call to Rise, which is on Amazon. So if your listeners are wanting to kind of really get that understanding of how to do that release work and how to um, get into their body versus living in the headspace so much, I have just so much information on that. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely include that in the show notes too. Great. Yeah. But you're but you're saying about how this masculinity achievement kind of stuff is so prevalent in our society and I think really our culture and not even I think it's in many cultures. Mm -hmm. Um there there is I think positives to it. There's positives, totally. to, you know, there's definitely positives. But I think when people base their importance off of their achievements or off of their education, that I think is sort of falls into ego. I think that what you were saying about women having this intuition, I think I, along that is so important to mention because I think once women can tap into that and realize that they have that special gift, then they can realize they they, it's just very empowering. And I think once you are able to tap into that, you're able to live happier, healthier, stronger. And I think it goes along the same lines of following your gut, your gut feeling, your heart. We always, we always say like when we're younger, like go after your dreams. But then people say, oh, your dreams are too big. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't, I just don't think that's true. I think that if something feels right, and regardless if it is, has, I think, cultural importance necessarily, I think if it feels right to someone to do something, if it really makes them want to wake up in the morning, and if it's what, you know, makes them happy. I think that that's the path that they should take. Absolutely. I mean, to me, anytime that we have a dream or something, we feel like we should be doing like a calling, a drive to do something that maybe not, doesn't make sense, you know, quote unquote sense. That is literally a direct gift from 
the divine source, God, the universe, whatever word you want to use that feels really nice and fluffy to you, that's great. Whatever that is, that's literally given to you. It's given to only you, and you are the one who is capable of doing it. You would not have a dream. You would not have a desire that you were not capable of fulfilling. Definitely. You might not be capable who you are in this moment right now. Maybe you have to acquire new skills. Maybe you have to, you know, start doing something else with yourself. But if you have that dream, that vision, I just 100% believe that you are the one who is meant to bring it to life. 100%. And just to add to that, I think that once you do go after that dream, the universe will, the universe or whatever term people want to use will support you to get there. Yes. Yes, definitely definitely like things start falling into place when you make a decision when you clear up that vision like that's why i am so big and like everybody who's ever worked with me will tell you this i am so big on getting the vision clear on getting what you desire like what you are wanting to accomplish in your life not even accomplish just who you're wanting to be in your life getting that clear because once you do that it's like the dominoes will line up for you to be able to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, what you've been saying about having a clear vision, it makes it so much more possible to know where you're going. But then I think also on a more subconscious level to visualize and, and I think have it sort of a sense of knowingness or even ma like manifestation, it, I, it, that's that all comes into play with knowing where you're going. I think totally. there's uh, this guru that I saw. He said, like, if you take a, a step, take 10 steps in that one direction, then 10 steps in another one, and then another one, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. Yeah. So you touched a little bit on spirituality. I want to dive into that more because that is something that I'm really passionate about. And I know that a lot of more people are passionate about that. So what is spirituality? Like, how do you think that this can help people's lives? Well, to me, we are all spiritual beings um, and we're here having this experience. And my job as a human being is to grow from these experiences. So, and all of that is done through my spiritual connection. I wouldn't be here talking to you today. Uh, the audience would not be listening to me if I did not have a spiritual connection. Um, to me, it's been the thing that has allowed me to heal and allow me to feel connected to other people because it's like this understanding of we're never alone. You know, for a long time in my life, I really did feel like I was alone. Um, you know, I didn't grow up in a household that was super supportive of, supportive of me and what I wanted to do. So I think that was something I learned really young. Like if I was, I had to do things on my own and I was just on my own. And if I got myself into some shit, I had to get myself out of it. Like that was just sort of ingrained in me. Opening up myself to a spiritual practice and to my own understanding of what God was, um, it really has, has allowed me to love more, um, to experience more love and more joy than I ever even really thought possible because all of those things are available to me when I just close my eyes and connect. Um, and I think, you know, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have my own relationship with something that is greater than me. Yeah, I love how you started that off of saying that we're, all, we're spiritual beings having a physical existence in this moment because I, I mean, it could be interpreted in so many ways, but I think that in my belief, we are in this learning experience of planet earth to learn how, what our souls need to grow. And I think that the experiences that we have are basically tailored to what we need to grow. And I believe that cycles repeat itself until the catalyst breaks or the thing repeating the cycle changes and it moves to a higher vibration. 
So I think when we say that we're having a physical, we're souls having a physical experience, I think that's so important to realize because sometimes I think at the same time we could be so caught up with, you know, like we were talking about material achievements or being this or being that. But when it really comes down to it, where I, I believe we are souls having a physical experience. So when you put it like that, things that weren't, that seemed really important kind of become not as important and your life and your happiness and your purpose start to unfold in a bigger sense. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. And, you know, and I'm somebody who for, gosh, I was not raised in any kind of religion. I, I think at one point I referred to myself as an atheist. I was just, I had no understanding because the only thing that I really was, um, shown or, you know, even given little tastes of was organized religion when I was younger. And I was like, well, this isn't for me, but even coming to, you know, my, my own awakening and understanding, I just, I just feel like, gosh, for me, it would be super depressing to feel like I'm just having these experiences in life. There's no purpose. There's no reason, you know, and then I just die. That, that's not something that I want to believe because the other choice is actually everything that happens in my life is for my soul's ev evolution, for my spiritual growth. Because when I look at that, you know, when I, when I say like, I'm somebody who's been through a lot of trauma and some really terrible things in my life. If I didn't have the understanding that that was here for my soul's growth and that is the purpose, I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do. And I think that, you know, for any of you guys listening out there, it's as simple as just feeling into your heart space and allowing that to expand and allowing that to expand and feeling into your womb space and feeling what's inside there and what's going on and inviting that connection in. And you can start to do that just in a few minutes a day and you'll get to a point where you're, where you just, wow, you know, there's so much more out here that I don't understand. Totally. I, I am so in agreement with that, with listening to your body. I think that's a very major part of what we've been talking about. <clears throat> I think when it comes to, you know, what we've been talking about, for me, I think, remember the stage I was telling you about when I was like trying to not feel my feelings? Mm-hmm. I was at the same time blaming God for my problems. And I think it was after my breaking points, after I had come to the realization that I was dying. It was when I, after that, when I was in just so much pain, was when I, I, I remembered, like, literally, I was sitting on my bed crying, and I was just like, I, I, I had this huge wall up, like, no, God, <laughs> right? And then I was like, okay, God, please help me. Like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do, but I need help. And I just think, like, asking for help is, there's no shame in that. I think asking for help is very empowering, and you, it allows the universe to give you the help that you need. Totally. And not even the universe, just asking for help in general. I in mean, general. Oh my gosh, like I was somebody who for so long did not ask for help because I had this false idea that being strong, like, you know, and pretending like I was okay and just trying to push through everything was the strong stance to take. And I think a lot of women do that, right? We have this idea of a strong woman just moving on and, and just plowing through. And to me, that's not strong. What's strong is being vulnerable. What's strong is asking for help and, and allowing yourself to receive it, right? Yeah. And that goes back into um, that idea of feminine energy and really coming back in tune with, with yourself and slowing down and, and that, that receiving, right? Because so many people don't allow themselves to receive. They don't allow themselves to receive love. They don't allow themselves to receive pleasure. They don't allow themselves to receive help. And if you can just 
start to allow yourself to receive just on a small level and allow that to grow and grow and grow, you realize, wow, that, yeah, that wasn't strong. That wasn't strong. Asking for help is strong. Being available to that is strong. And I know for me, it was a lot harder to do that and to come to that place. Kind of like what you were saying, it was a lot easier to blame and say, this is your fault than to say, I just really need help right now. I don't know how to do this. Please help me. What a powerful prayer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's something I think for me personally, it had to be very sincere. You know, what we were talking about before about purpose and stuff like that, it had, it dawned on me that I wanted to bring up how what it often makes a lot of sense. So for example, there's this woman I had met, she went, she had like heart cancer or something like that. And then after she overcame heart cancer, she started some doing something <clears throat> to help people <clears throat> who have heart cancer. Or, or like my doctor, my dad, he always had questions about health and stuff like that and working on himself and then he became a doctor and how you went through the certain things that you went through and now <clears throat> and now you help people so i think when you look at turn in the in those kind of terms it makes a lot of sense the things that we go through and how they for they they help us into becoming stronger people and growing into our purposes yeah i totally agree with that you know i think that um that happens for a lot of people right like we don't go through things in our life for no reason it, to me that definitely resonates because for me i feel like the purpose that i had to go through this was like i said in the beginning it was that catalyst for me to be the woman that i am today and i had to go through it the way that i went through it so i could experience all of that so i could help people that much more definitely definitely and i love what you said about going through it to help people that's how i feel right now about helping people um i think it comes from such a sincere place because you know i was there and the people that you helped like you were there so i think you know it it is very very important to realize that these things do happen for a reason and on a similar note to be grateful that it all happened because it's what led you here today totally i have an immense amount of gratitude for everything that's ever happened in my life um because that's just the option that i'm choosing you of course you always have options you always have the choice to be mm -hmm. grateful for it or to resent it i choose not to hold resentments and i choose to use everything for my power and my purpose and to be really really clear on my path and um, I think that anybody can make that choice. It's not always the easy choice. Um, and it's a process. Like it's not, you know, I think for me, sometimes it, get, it can get kind of easy to be like, okay, yeah, you just do this and then you can do that. It's a, it's a process, you know? So whatever you're going through, it's not, it's not like things are just going to get better in one day or change in one day. You know, I say the reclamation of your power is a process it didn't get lost overnight and to like truly reclaim that within yourself it is a process i did not really even start dealing specifically with women that have been through the the toxic relationship stuff until i felt one that i had completely kind of really really healed from that and that i could also function in a healthy relationship mm -hmm. i did not want to say like I know how to help you through this until I was in that space where I'm like, okay, not only am I able to get over this toxic relationship, heal my trauma. By the way, I have no health issues. I have no autoimmune disorders. Like I'm in great physical condition. I had to do all of that first, right? Like we have to help ourselves first. And yeah. you, you know, because that's, that's like a codependent thing where it's like, oh, I can help other people and I can do all this stuff for other people while you're still avoiding your own stuff we have to help ourselves first. Once I was able to fully help myself, I opened myself up to help other people. Um, 
And it sounds like you're on that path too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's, I totally agree. It's so important to help yourself when I, I, in the space, I think of mentally, of spiritually and physically before we try to help other people. And I think when we say helping other people, I think we should also mention how it's not our job necessarily to change people um, in the sense of changing them on their path, like in, like infringing something to f- try to force the change. Like if someone doesn't want to change the way that they are, we have to let them go through that themselves to wake up. If we can try the best that we can, but if they don't want it, then we have to allow, we have to accept that too. Totally. I mean, everybody's on their own path and they'll come into their own journey. Like we're all on our own journeys. I can't take anybody else's journey away from them. You know, we all are in our own timelines. I cannot help anybody that does not want my help and I won't. I will absolutely not do it. You know, if you want my information, cool. Come follow me, check out, like listen to my podcast, read my stuff that I write. Great. If you don't, cool. Like move on. It'll be there when you're ready for it. Um, And I think, you know, for us as people that are in the healing space that are in, you know, people call it the light worker space, whatever it is, we are being the lights. We are being the guiding. Like, I'm just going to be over here. If you want to join me, you can come. I certainly will not go to you. And um, that's how I look at it. And uh, I think that, you know, just being that person that is, is giving the space to other people to say, hey, it's here if you want it. Um, I think that when we all sort of get on this spiritual path, when you're going through that awake, awakening within yourself, it can be a tendency to want to take all of the people with you. You know, you want your friends to come with you. You want them to understand your new understanding. You want your family to understand. It's not for them to understand. And yeah. you have to realize that you, when you change, when you come into this spiritual path or whatever it is, you are going to lose some people in your life, but you can never lose people that are meant to be in your life. You literally start vibrating at a different frequency when you start thinking new thoughts, when you start acting differently, when you open yourself up spiritually, you literally start vibrating at a different frequency. This is how attraction works. You are going to vibrate higher maybe than those people that you've been hanging out with or that you've been around. You're going to go through a space where you're probably feeling kind of lonely and feeling like people don't understand you. This is when everything's sort of being calibrated and then you're going to get into a space where, oh my gosh, I'm meeting all of these people that think like me, that act like me, that, and then you find yourself in where you're actually supposed to be, right? So this life is our journey and we can't worry about bringing those other people with us. Yeah, totally, totally. The people who are meant to be there will be there. And the people who are even worth keeping on anyway will support you in the endeavors that help you become a better person. Totally. Absolutely. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, I've never been afraid to move and to jump and to do what I needed to do for me. Um, And I think that the more people that do that, the happier that you will be and you will find the people that resonate with you. Um, and you'll live a really awesome life. Yeah, yeah. And I think we should just mention, because you were talking about attraction and stuff like that, just want to throw it out there. The law of attraction, look it up. <laughs> there's there's books out there, there's movies. Check it out, the law of attraction. So I just, I wanted to ask, what is one of your biggest takeaways from working with people in this industry? Uh, that we're all a lot more similar than we would believe. You know, we all go through so many similar experiences. We have really similar, uh, what I call core wounds, you know, things that we worry about and, um, you know, that feeling of not being enough or that feeling of rejection or abandonment. Um, we're all really, really similar in that aspect. And, when you understand that, you can have a little more self-compassion. So I hope that you take that and give yourself a little compassion today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. It is so true. We, I think sometimes 
people tend to think that they that their problems are ginormously <clears throat> different than other people or they're just different or their situation is just like it's just so much worse mm -hmm. but when it really comes down to the root level it doesn't necessarily matter the level of the experience like it could but people have the underlying root same emotions around those things something that is so heavy to one person could mean nothing to someone else but you know it, it comes down to the same emotions and i think what we are saying that everyone has some sort of trauma we are so much more similar and this this person who could be your next best friend might not be the exact skin color or race that, or age that you're envisioning but to keep an open mind about it is so important absolutely yeah yeah i think one of my biggest takeaways from helping people is that people are very grateful when you actually try to to listen to them when you when you when you really take the time to try to hear them out and connect with them sometimes all people need is a listening ear and so just some some guidance and i read a, i read a quote somewhere sometime that said 99 that's 99 percent of the time people aren't listening to people that are talking so if someone's talking, listen to them. And so that changed my life. And I totally recommend people to listen more. Yeah, listening is hard, right? Because we're like trapped up in what are we going to say to this person that's talking and um, we don't listen. But at the end of the day, all humans mm -hmm. want to be seen. They want to be heard. So if you can provide that for somebody, like, I really see you, I really hear you, and be that space for somebody, that's so, so healing. Just being a safe space for somebody to be themselves and to receive it and to love them through that, like, what a powerful healing thing to do. Totally, totally. Yeah, words I often say are, I hear you, and I'm listening. I see you, you know, like as you were saying, I think those are very powerful words to use and I recommend listeners to use those words when they mean it to their loved ones, their friends and their family. Definitely. Yeah. So what is your main message that you really want to emphasize to the listeners? Yeah. So the main message is this, is my, my mission is to have every woman know her worth, speak her truth, set her standards, and refuse to settle. Because when you do those things, then you can have what I call the unleashed life. Then you can live life in your full expression. And to me, that is what life is about. I want to live fully expressed. And what I mean by that is like, I want to be the powerful woman that I know I'm meant to be. I want to say what is my truth. I want to live in that fullest expression of who I am, not the idea of what other people think about me, not the idea of who my parents say I am, not the idea of who society says that I am, but who I really am. And I want to show up as that version of me more and more every single day. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for doing your part to helping people. I mean, I think that is just so so inspiring. But what you were saying about being who you who you really are without the 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 infringement of who or what people think you should be or what the culture or the society just so not zoning all of that out and being your true self, I think is what will bring the gifts that you're meant to bring to earth. And, Absolutely. and you know, so I, I love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing that. There, there's one thing that I really wanted to touch on 
um, before I ask our last question, which is when we were, when we first talked, you said that self-love is one of the keys to living a very sort of enriching life. Can you just touch on that before I ask our last question? Yeah. So for me, I think self-love for me and the idea of self-love, I really tie into self-worth um, because self-worth is sort of that underlying thing that will really get you everything that you desire in life. When I love myself, I increase my self-worth and therefore I increase what I get to have in this life. That's why the first pillar of what I talk about is know your worth because your what you have or don't have in your life is a direct reflection as of if you believe that you are worthy of it. The best way that I know how to increase your self-worth is by practicing self-love, doing the things that you know that you need to do for yourself to take care of yourself. And there's a lot of talk about, oh, you know, self-love is going to get your nails done or going to get a massage. And yeah, that's part of it, but it's also having compassion for yourself and everything that you have been through. It's having a practice where you can tune into yourself and know that you are enough and practice your affirmations and do the work that you need to do for yourself. It's rewriting those inner beliefs. All of that is self-love because like we can say, oh, love yourself, love yourself. But if you don't believe that you are lovable because of things that have happened in your life and you have all this evidence about how you aren't lovable, it's really quite futile for me to say, oh, just go ahead and love yourself. It's a practice. It's a practice. And that's why it has to start with self-compassion and it has to start with just accepting yourself exactly as you are. And when you can yeah. do that, like you can still love yourself and desire to change. You can love yourself and want different things in your life. There is nothing stopping yourself from loving you in this moment. But we forget that, right? We think that we have to do all of these things to deserve it or to be worthy of it. Maybe you did something bad, you know, quote unquote bad when you were 17 years old and you've been punishing yourself for it, or you felt like you've been a bad person. It doesn't matter. You are still a lovable human being. You still deserve love in this moment. And when you start giving that to yourself, your entire life can change. I totally agree. Totally agree. Everything that you just said is just so powerful. Self-compassion is definitely a key to self-love, self-worth. And I think having compassion for yourself is so important because it's like saying even even if this happened i still love myself it's still okay and i'm not going to be so hard on myself and 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 just letting yourself take some space to breathe and realizing that nobody's perfect we're all i say we're in, we're all imperfectly perfect in our own ways Absolutely. Like, I don't even know where the idea of perfection even came from. It's literally not possible. There's no such thing. <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also love how you said that we, you can love yourself in the moment and still want to grow. It's so true. But I think that something people might not realize is you, it's a good idea to love yourself where you're at or else you will never love you. I don't want to say you will never love yourself, but let's say you finally get to the place that you think you will love yourself at. You will most likely still want to love yourself at another place because your expectations are higher now. So loving yourself totally. where you're at, it has in the moment, in the moment that you're in right now, has so much to do with everything. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Because if you, like I said, if you're having all of these reasons of why you deserve it or why you don't, that's what keeps you stuck. Because the truth is, is that you are here on this planet. You deserve love. Like every baby that is born, you would never see a baby come out being born and be like, that baby doesn't deserve love. That's just not a thing. And it's the same with you. You are a human 
beautiful human being and you deserve love now and always. Yeah. Yeah. You deserve love from yourself, from, from the one, people around you. You deserve love from the universe or ho whoever you want to refer to. You deserve love in all directions. You deserve abundance. You deserve prosperity, health, happiness, joy, peace, harmony, and yes to anything. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you deserve whatever floats your boat and makes you feel good. So the last question is, what does the universe mean to you? So, and you know what, this is an interesting question. I really had to think about it. You know, what does the universe mean to me? And like, I guess the simple answer is that it's, it's everything. It's the energy that is around me all of the time. It's the thing that is quietly supporting me. It's the thing that is guiding me. It's literally the connection to everything and to everybody. It's everything. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great answer. I think from just a, just a logical standpoint, it makes so much sense. The universe is the atoms that we are floating around us. It's what we're made out of. So it's, it's really, that's a beautiful answer. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me today and adding your value to our listeners. So where can they find you online? Yeah, so the best place uh, where I hang out the most is probably Instagram. So you can catch me there at Miss MS Kelly Kristen. And also my podcast uh, is called Woman Unleashed. And if you are really, really wanting to get into the work, um, like I talked about earlier, my book, The Call to Rise, is a guide to healing and becoming the powerful woman you are meant to be. And that is available on Amazon. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.